In this problem, we're told a dock worker applies a constant horizontal force of 80 newtons to a block of ice on a smooth horizontal floor. The frictional force is negligible. The block starts from rest and moves 11 meters in 5 seconds. A. What is the mass of the block of the ice? And B. If the worker stops pushing at the end of 5 seconds, how far does the block move in the next 5 seconds? So let's go ahead and draw what's going on here. So we have this dock worker. They're applying a constant force to a block of ice. So we have this block of ice, and so we know it's going to have a constant force of 80 newtons. So 80 newtons going to be pushing it this way, right? And then we know it's going to travel for, or it's going to start from rest. So we know it's going to be traveling 0 meters per second at this point in time. And then it's going to travel for 11 meters, right? And this is going to take 5 seconds. And then our block's going to be here. And then, so yeah, this is going to be a drawing of what's going on. Let's go ahead and write down the given. I always think you should write down what you're given first. So what do we know? So we know the force being applied onto this is going to be 80 newtons. So force equals 80 newtons. So I always like just to write out the variables that were given. So that's that. And then you want to think about this like kinematics. So what is the initial velocity or V sub zero? So we know it's going to be starting from rest, right? block starts from rest so it's going to be traveling zero meters per second so initial velocity zero meters per second and then the time it's going to take we're told right the time to travel this interval we know is going to be five seconds and then we also know the distance it's going to travel right it's going to travel 11 meters so we we're told both of those and then keep in mind what a is asking us for it's asking for the mass of the block of the ice so mass equals question mark because that's what we're trying to find. And so keep in mind what uh, how to find mass. So we know force equals mass times acceleration. So if we divide both sides by acceleration, uh, mass is equal to force divided by acceleration. So if we're trying to find the mass, we need the force and the acceleration. So keep in mind we have the force, 80 newtons, but we don't have the acceleration. So what we have to do is find acceleration first. So acceleration equals question mark because we have to find that too. So let's go ahead and start. So we need to find the acceleration given these variables here. And based off these variables, I think the best equation to use is delta x equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. Right? Because notice how we're given v sub 0. We're given delta x and we're given t. So we can solve for the acceleration over this interval. So plugging in everything, delta x we know is 11 equals uh, the initial velocity, which is 0 times the time, which is 5, plus 1 half, times a, right, because we just leave it as a, because that's what we're solving for, times time, which is 5 squared. So this is going to be this is gonna become 0 right here. And then 5 squared is going to be 25. Dividing by 2 is going to be 12.5. So you're going to get 11 equals 12.5a. Divide both sides by 12.5 to get rid of it so we can get a by itself. A equals 11 divided by 12.5. If you do this, you're going to get A equals 0.88. And then notice the units when we measure acceleration and we're using meters in seconds here. It's going to be in meters per second squared. So let's write our acceleration right here. Meters per second squared. And now what we can do is actually solve A. So we're trying to find the mass of the block of the ice. We know force equals mass times acceleration. Actually, let me write it down here. So force equals mass times acceleration. So we're solving for mass, so divide both sides by A. Mass equals force over acceleration. So plugging in force, we know is 80. Divided by the acceleration we just found, 0.88. And make sure when you do this, your uh, force is in newtons, mass is in, or acceleration is in meters per second squared. In this case, it is. If it's not in your problem, just change it. And so uh, if we do this 80 divided by 0.88, you're going to get about 90.9. And then the units you use to measure uh, mass is in kilograms if you use meters per second squared and newtons. So this right here is going to be answer to A, 90.9. So that's that. Let's move on to B. So if the worker stops pushing at the end of the five seconds, how far does the block move in the next five seconds? So this is our block at the end, and we're asking how far it moves in the next five seconds. So if we draw another line here, and then we know it's going to be 5 seconds here, 
another five seconds. We're trying to find how far it travels during this interval. And so notice how they say the, uh, the worker stops pushing. So since they stop pushing, our acceleration, because they're not adding any more force, it's just going to be zero. So that's just like the key to solving this problem. You have to notice that since they're not doing it, acceleration is going to be zero meters per second squared. And so keep in mind what we're trying to find is how far it moves. So we're trying to find delta x. So if we're trying to find the distance here and we use the formula, or you can use any kinematic formula, or not any, but you can pick whichever one you want to use. So if we use the formula delta x equals v sub zero times t plus one half a t squared, notice how we have a. So this is going to become zero, right? Because if we plug in a for this, it's going to be zero here. So really delta x just equals v sub zero times t. And we know the time. And we're trying to find the distance. So we need the velocity right at this point, right? We need the initial velocity. And essentially the initial velocity here is going to be the final velocity in over this interval, right? Because it's just, it ends here and then it starts for the next one. So what we want to do is find the final velocity here. And so if we're given all these variables, we know v equals v sub zero plus a times t, right? So solving for the final velocity, which is right here. And we're given uh, the initial velocity, right? Which is zero here. We have the acceleration and we have the time, right? The acceleration is 0.88. Time is five because it's five seconds over this interval. So what we're going to do is just solve for v. So v sub zero we know is just zero. So zero plus the acceleration, 0.88. So I'll just write it like this, 0.88 times five. And that's going to give us the velocity right here so we can actually solve the next one. So if you do this, it's going to be 0.88 times five, which is 4.4. .4. And then it's going to be in meters per second because we're using meters in seconds. So the velocity here, v sub zero, I'm going to call it 4.4 .4 meters per second. And now we can just take our initial velocity multiply it by the time, right? Because acceleration is zero, so it's just going to be this formula right here. So delta x is going to be equal to 4.4 .4 times 5, which is the total time over the interval. So if you do this 4.4 .4 times 5, you're going to get 22. And then it's going to be measured in, because we're using meters in seconds, or meters per second in seconds. So seconds will cancel. You'll get it in meters. So if the worker stops pushing at the end, how far does it move? It's going to move. 22 meters. So this right here is going to be your answer to B. And so yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.